Wait, what's this? Is this actually the ocean? How long has it been since we've seen that? Like three weeks? No, we're not in Florida or the Caribbean. We're in Alabama, people. Yes, Alabama has an ocean. It's not very big, but they have one. It was day 20 on this long, weary southern road trip. And this is a breath of fresh ocean breeze air. <sighs> Too bad it's so cloudy and all. But that's how it is at the ocean sometimes, right? We'll be here along the Gulf for the next few days. It's a hell of a lot different here than the agricultural land I just left. Mobile has a lot of culture and some jobs and just feels alive. Rural Alabama has its own sort of charm, but this, this is stimulating. <laughs> or is it? Mobile, Alabama. We're right on Mobile Bay. That's a port right there. It's been a really important part of the city's history. A lot of things come through that port. Cars, food, cheap Chinese crap. You may not know it, but Mobile has the 12th biggest port in the country. So where are we anyways? We're here. Mobile sits along the Gulf of Mexico, and it's just a short drive from both Mississippi and Florida. It's a really neat area. The downtown area is known for its history and charming streets, and there's a lot of beaches nearby. We saw that already. Some people know about Mobile's posh suburbs, and we'll get to that in a minute. The population here is 187,000, and it's dropping. Not fast, but there's been quite a few people who have moved from Mobile proper and out into the burbs where it's a lot quieter and safer. There's a lot of good stuff here to talk about, but it's Alabama, so it's not going to be perfect. Before we get to the awesome, let's begin with the bad stuff, because that's what most of you people want. First off, the crime here is off the charts bad. This might be a surprise. It was to me. According to the FBI, parts of Mobile like the one we're in now have some of the highest number of violent crimes of any city in the country. Like, way more than Memphis and Detroit. The only city more dangerous is St. Louis. You probably don't hear a lot about it. But look at this map. That big dark dot. That's here. Now keep in mind, there's a bunch of cities that don't report their crimes to the FBI, so this list might be a little skewed, but that doesn't mean they don't have a crisis here. Look at this. Which U.S. cities are more dangerous than Mobile? Zero are. Crime is almost five times higher than anywhere else in an already dangerous state. You have a one in nine chance of being the victim of a property crime here. One in nine. I don't know if I've ever seen that before, and I look at this stuff all the time. I was actually pretty surprised when I saw that. I mean, Mobile? Alabama? What? Most of the problems are on the city's north side. That's where we are right now. I mean, it looks pretty bleak driving around in the morning, right? I think southern ghettos look different from northeast and midwest ghettos. Up there, it's all brick houses. They're not falling down as often. A lot of the homes are made of wood down here. And all this overgrowth makes it all look even worse. You might be wondering how much houses like this are worth. <laughs> not like you want to move here or anything, but you could get a house on this street for $3,000 if you wanted to. No shit. 
Google it. It's just on some road in Mobile, Alabama. Early in the morning. Damn. This tree is messed up. There were more than 50 murders here last year. The Mobile Police Department says the violent crime numbers here are going down, even though they're shorthanded on cops. I don't know how they're doing that. Of course, most of the killings between gangs and druggies. And it sounds like the teenage knuckleheads here are running the show for now. I'll figure out a way to deal with that. And Pritchard, just outside of Mobile, is even worse. This is what downtown Pritchard looks like. You could call Pritchard a ghetto, and they couldn't argue with that. You wouldn't want to live in Pritchard. Crime here is bad, bad, bad. The Mobile Police Chief says there's not a whole lot the police department can do to reduce all the homicides. In order for us to prevent them, we have to know who the offenders are, he said. <laughs> well, I'll tell you where to look. I just got here and I know where they live. One church leader here said they need stricter gun control and a crackdown on violent music. The music that our young people are listening to is crazy, he says. It teaches them violence and they're listening to it over and over, and their mindsets are beginning to want to mimic this violent music they listen to. I think we'd all agree with that. It's just really poor all over the north end up here. A lot of the housing's in really bad shape. A lot of North Mobile is just straight up abandoned, or on its way to abandoned. It's messed up, but that's how it is here. But let's get out of this part of town. It's time to show you all the wonderful things I saw down here. This is downtown Mobile, right on Dauphin Street. It's the main entertainment part of downtown. This is where a lot of bars and clubs and restaurants are at. This is also where all the tourists hang out. This might remind you of New Orleans. Well, to me, downtown Mobile feels like a cleaner, safer New Orleans. They have the same stuff the French Quarter has, just in smaller doses. Not as many potholes and broken sidewalks. Not nearly as many bums and sketchy people running around. It's definitely a lot more chill than New Orleans is. And clearly there's some work that needs to be done, but it's pretty nice downtown overall, I have to say. If you want your New Orleans fix, they have what you need. Don't worry about that. They have the little daiquiri shops where you can get the boo slushies to go and walk around downtown. And yes, they have beads here with a purchase of some peanuts, apparently. That's cool. If you don't want to blend in down here, wear some beads. People even throw their beads into the trees, just like in New Orleans. You may not know it, but Mardi Gras originally began in Mobile. And Mobile was founded by the French, and it was the original capital of Louisiana. This was also part of Florida at one point, too. There's a lot of confusing history about all this stuff. But all over the area, you see Spanish and French influences. There's some Creole and a little Catholic sprinkled in. I mean, they have an art and a music and a dance scene. It all feels so much more loose here than the rest of Alabama. It's definitely more laid back and liberal than the rest of Alabama. I'm sure that a lot of hardcore Alabamans think this place is for the devil. We're in the deep, deep, deep South, so religion's a big deal. Alabama's actually the most religious state of all, 
when you measure the number of people who go to church all the time. You're reminded of that everywhere you go here. There's churches everywhere here. Some are really impressive and historic. Many are Baptist. I thought this was a church. I think it's some sort of an event center. But this is a very impressive church. It's called the Cathedral Basilica of the Immaculate Conception. Fancy indeed. I actually went to church down here since it was on Easter Sunday. I never go to church, but it was a very nice experience. We'll be right back. So this is probably a good time to talk about one of my sponsors. Look, I stay up on the news and I keep hearing about this financial crisis that's going to happen. Like Bloomberg and BlackRock and even Wells Fargo are saying we need to change our financial plans. Some are saying the U.S. dollar won't be the world's currency. Other news is saying we're due for a recession. But almost everything you read says something's brewing. One way to have a good backup plan is to invest in gold and silver. A lot of experts say the cost of gold is going to go through the roof soon. Patriot Gold Group is a top-rated gold and silver coin dealer that helps customers invest in physical precious metals. If you think we're going to see a financial crisis, a good alternative is a no-fee-for-life 401k or an IRA that's backed by physical gold and silver. A lot of top experts say gold and silver is going to hit record highs. I'm telling you, I'm doing it. The link to Patriot Gold is in the description. And let them know Nick Johnson sent you. And now back to the show. Mobile, Alabama was a big deal a long time ago because of the port and the cotton in the area. A lot of cotton farmers and lawyers and merchants and business people were the first ones to really thrive here. But Mobile went through some hard times. The cotton industry fell apart, which set the place back. Then in the 70s, they shut down a lot of the shipbuilding industries. Well, we were in peacetime. We didn't need as many national defense jobs. So the 70s were a hard time for Mobile. They lost a lot of jobs, and the city struggled, and a lot of people left. Today, there aren't a ton of amazing jobs here, but things seem to be picking up quite a bit. A lot of good-paying jobs here today are in shipping and fishing and manufacturing. There's actually a lot of good, high-skilled jobs in manufacturing here. They're even building airplanes in the area. Hopefully, those jobs aren't outsourced one day. Hopefully, Mexico doesn't start building our airplanes and ships. That would suck. And of course, tourism is a big deal here. Spring break here is just crazy, as it is along the rest of Alabama's Gulf Coast. I was not here during spring break. It was early April, so there really wasn't a lot going on. And I was just fine with that. And the neighborhoods, everyone. Look at these houses. This is about a mile from downtown. Very southern charming, huh? They don't make houses like this anymore. This kind of looks like the St. Charles Avenue district I saw in New Orleans on the first day of the trip, which seems like ages ago at this point. All these old restored antebellum homes sure are easy on the eyes. In case you're wondering, homes here are anywhere from two to four hundred thousand. Quite a deal, huh? I know. But it's not just the Mobile area that makes the area so special. It's what's around it. I drove around the entire bay so as to show you what it all looks like. Here's the route I took. I went to Daphne and Fairhope, which are both very nice fancy burbs. Then I went through rural Baldwin County to the coast at Gulf Shores. Then I took a ferry over to Dauphin Island, and then I drove back up to Mobile. I know, everyone. I did that for you. And for me to see everything. My first stop was Daphne. To get there, you take a bridge. It takes about 20 minutes or so. Now, Daphne's considered one of the upper-class regions of the bay. 
but you don't have to be a high earner to be considered upper class in Alabama. The average family in Daphne brings in about 75K a year. A lot of the people who fled Mobile live on this side of the bay and they drive over the bridge every day for work. You could say Daphne is your typical conservative, southern, old money type of place. This side of the bay is a lot safer than Mobile proper, I'll tell you that. The average cost for a home in Mobile is 175 grand. That's pretty cheap, right? Well, out here in Burb land, a house will set you back about 300K. And that's actually not too bad either, is it? Daphne has somewhat of a quaint little downtown. There's not much here, though. I don't know if you can even call this a downtown. But clearly, there's plenty of parking, right? Just 10 minutes down the road is Fairhope. It's a much fancier version of Daphne. Homes here are about a hundred grand more down this way. But you get a lot more for what you pay for. I mean, Fairhope actually has a real downtown with all the fancy things that rich people would want in their downtown. Look at all this stuff. I know, it's Alabama. You probably didn't even know Alabama had all this, but they do. Fairhope also has a nice little marina that I'm sure costs a lot to park a boat in. These people can just hop in their boats and cruise down Mobile Bay and be out into the Atlantic Ocean in no time. Here's where I eat brunch, at a place called the Broken Egg Cafe. It's in Fairhope, and it was packed because it was Easter Sunday. I got a big plate of huevos rancheros. Mm, 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 mm. So after you leave Fairhope, it gets pretty rural pretty damn fast. Most of the region between the fancy burbs and the coast is all wide open. It's called Baldwin County. And Baldwin County is quickly becoming a go-to spot for a lot of people who want peace and quiet and affordable and to be near the coast. Baldwin County is super chill. It's a lot of country living and farmland. I bet you didn't even know a big part of southern Alabama was in corn and beans like this. But it is. They even have horse ranches down here. I didn't think I'd see a spread like this only 20 minutes from the beach in Alabama. This will all probably be gone one day, though. There's just so much room down here. Look at all that prime real estate. One day, this is all going to be subdivisions and strip malls. I can practically smell the Starbucks already. I wanted to go to a place down here called Boggy's. That totally looks like my kind of place. But it was closed. I know, right? No man's land, Baldwin County, eventually spills out into the beach. Down here on the coast are some pretty nice beach towns. This is Gulf Shores, population 15,000, and going up. This is actually the fastest growing county in the state right now. Words out about how nice and still affordable Alabama's Gulf Coast is. And the Wall Street Journal just blew the lid off this place when it ran an article talking about how people are fleeing from nearby Florida and setting up a new life here. It's the same ocean, the same sunset, the same white sandy beaches, but not the same price. Nuh -uh. To me, it looks like a mini and far less dramatic Panama City Beach. Oh, don't get me wrong though. Gulf Shores and Orange Beach get super rowdy during spring break. It's just not Florida rowdy. I didn't know that Alabama had so many nice little quaint beach towns. It's kind of undiscovered. I mean, this is one of the least visited states after all. But I wouldn't want to go into that water. I hear there's a bunch of industrial waste pollution here since there's like five rivers that empty into Mobile Bay. 
Did you know some people call Mobile Bay the state's toilet? <laughs> Mappy, did you just fart? Seriously? And yes, I know that the Gulf isn't the cleanest body of water. It's great for sitting and staring and sunning, but not necessarily for water frolicking. And how are you sunburned? The sun's not even out. I have sensitive skin. I can see that. So at the end of the peninsula, you can take a ferry over to Dauphin Island. I think it fits like 20-something cars. If you miss the ferry at the end of the day, you have to drive all the way back around. No one wants to do that, right? And then you get to Dauphin Island. It's a really laid-back, quiet place. There's only 1,800 people here, so you know everybody's going to know your beeswax in town. So if you're into keeping a low profile, just know that there's likely a lot of island gossip going on. But look at these nice homes along the Gulf. I didn't think I'd see this in Alabama. Kind of looks like the Outer Banks in North Carolina to me. These are all in the six to $800,000 range. But there aren't any waves here. You can't surf this, but you can get right up against the water and enjoy the nice views. They do have some moderately priced homes here though. Here's where the less financially stable live in the middle of the island. These are all about half the price as the homes along the water. It was in this part of the island that I saw the fourth Confederate flag on the entire trip. That surprised me since I took so many back roads when I was down here. Thought I'd see a lot more of that stuff. Look at all the things there are to do on this little island. I think their sign needs to be repaired though, huh? But most of Dauphin Island is just really rural and chill. A pretty nice place to live if you want to be on an island and want some peace and quiet. And then you cross a really long bridge to get back to Mobile proper again. I'd hate to break down on this bridge. I'd also hate to be on it during a storm. out and about in Mobile. I did a lot. There's just so much to do. And unlike New Orleans, you can just walk around here and relax. So I waited until it stopped raining one day and kind of explored downtown a bit. The first person I ran into was this guy. He was a real hustler riding around town on his bike playing music for tourists like me. Cool guy. He's got me on the bike. My name is Keith Lamar Rogers. I do music on the streets. They call me Keyboard Keith. My cash app tag is KLR1971, and I'm going to demonstrate a 60 second song. Minus three seconds. Okay, sit on that. Uh, this is a couple playing original love song. And the words I say, so stay. Cash app. Keith, Keith Lamar Rogers and my cash app is K dollar sign K L R nineteen seventy one. Support me, please. I ducked into the blind mule for lunch, which is a fave for locals and tourists like me. I picked the Cajun Boudin wrap, and it was very good. Everybody told me I needed to go to Veets. I guess they could tell that I'd like it or something. And they were right. Veets is a cool place. My kind of place, a dive bar right in the middle of downtown. 
I took some time during the downpours and got a drink that has exactly one and a quarter ounces of booze in it. Then the rain stopped and I took my drink to go. Because you can here. And then guess what? The sun came out. Briefly. There's some homeless people in Mobile, but not many. If this park was in a downtown in California, it would be packed. You can bet that. I did find a downtown park that seemed to be homeless central. But again, this is nothing compared to many downtown parks that have a real homeless headache. This homeless guy just needed a break, I guess. I don't blame him. It's a pretty sleepy town. The fashion here is top notch. You could rock these suits to church if you wanted to and fit right in. I wouldn't wear something like this in the sweltering summer though. I can only imagine what that would be like. Told you this is the birthplace of Mardi Gras. They even have statues here to prove it. I heard my hotel has a rooftop bar, so I had to see that. I was super excited. What the heck? Closed? Damn it. I was so excited too. Look at that view that I can't really see because the door's locked. By the way, they don't mess around here with parking penalties. Word of warning, make sure you pay for your parking. At the end of my exploring that night, I went back to Veet's for drinks. They had a live 80s band called Here Comes the Sucker Punch. They did a pretty good job on Hysteria and Zombie, I have to say. Neat band. And what a night. I like Mobile a lot, actually. Way more than I thought I would. It feels like a nicer, cleaner, more toned down version of some of the more popular historic cities along the coast. Like, imagine if you picked up a few blocks from the French Quarter, hosed them down, and then moved them like 100 miles east. It's all very southern charming all over this area, with oak-lined streets and older stately homes. I'm glad I came here, even though it doesn't have all the drama that most places I visit have. It's totally southern in the sense that nothing really happens here very quickly. Progress and change moves slow. Yes, they need more development. Yes, white collar jobs aren't a thing here yet. And sure, there's some major problems with crime in some pockets of town. But I kind of hope Mobile doesn't change too much. It's kind of funky and charming in its own little way. And so you've been there since the 80s? Uh, 85. Okay. Yep. How has Mobile changed since um, since you moved there? Well, um, it's really changed a lot. In the 80s, the downtown area used to just be popping. Uh, you know, the city buses ran, everything, all the stores were down here. But as the 80s got well known and malls got popular, a lot of things went out western towards western part of Mobile. So the downtown areas, which most downtown areas in major cities are kind of dwindling because they're building in the outskirts. So Mobile had done a reversal transition and it's revitalizing its downtown with more uh, developing its history here and a lot more industry with the downtown area. So it's really bringing it back alive again. Yeah, it's great. It's clean. It feels safe. Um, it feels like a little mini New Orleans without all the drama and the broken roads and the trash and the and the headaches that come with being in New Orleans. Have you noticed an influx of people moving to Mobile? Where are they coming from? A lot, a lot. Um, Europe. Um, a lot of Europeans are here. We have a lot of uh, Asian. Uh, we have a big. Uh, uh, Latino community here, um, a big variety uh, of culture that is here. That's why they call us the city of gumbo, because it's just a whole bunch of, of, of everyone here. And people from mm -hmm. the north, 
when they come to visit Mobile, they're just actually taken away by the culture and the food and uh, the lifestyle that um, they end up moving down here. So why, how come Mobile's not at the top of people's lists uh, in places to move to in the South? Do you know what I mean? Because I like it a lot. I found yeah. it to be very charming. Um, a lot of people just don't talk about Mobile as being a destination. It doesn't make any lists of places you should move to that I've heard. Why is that? Well, we're just kind of like that hidden gem. Uh, a lot of people will say, you know, we've always – driven by Mobile, but we've never stopped. So when they'll come into my store, they, they just fall in love with the city of Mobile. And then three weeks later, they'll be like, hey, do y'all remember us? I stopped by and uh, we're spending the weekend here. So um, there's a lot, to, a lot of history is in Mobile. You know, we're a city of six nations. So um, the history here is just phenomenal. And um, the tourist industry is really big here in the city of Mobile too. But so you look at the city of New Orleans and they're such a larger city to where they, their, their monies for advertisement really goes towards that. And a lot of people associate New Orleans with um, Bourbon Street and places like that. So you're a former law enforcement. You'd have some insight into this. Um, they, there's parts of Mobile that are more dangerous than just about any neighborhood in the country based on statistics. Now, I went to some of those neighborhoods. They didn't seem that bad to me. Why does Mobile's crime rate, why is it so high? Well, I don't, Mobile's crime rate per capita of the size of the city of Mobile is about the norm. Um, now you get into larger cities, your crime rate is going to go up a lot higher. And it's not, uh, it's youth crime. It's not adult crime. It, it, it's the youth crime. So once you get a grab hold of that and grabs that and take that under control, then you can start taking a hold of uh, the problem of, of your city. But until you get a hold of the youth crime element, uh, you're going to have problems. So youth like teenagers shooting guns and doing drugs and just being knuckleheads? Yeah, you know, I think that it's just hard to do from the ages of 15 to 18. You can't go into a nightclub. Um, you you got to be in by a certain uh, curfew. You got high school to deal with. So the, the lifestyle for that age group is very limited. It's very hard to be a teenager now. And then when you are... Um, it is about social media. So you get attracted to social media because that's really the only thing for the age group to do. So then that's why they get addicted to social media. Mm -hmm. uh, Gary, everything sounds great. What's the downside to Mobile? I, 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 it all sounds like a wonderful place. You know, I really can't tell you a downside of the city of Mobile. I love the city of Mobile. Um, yeah, I, I walk my neighborhoods every day, every day, uh, four or five miles just walking. You even see little old ladies walking their dogs around neighborhoods. Um, and I'm not saying that, you know, Mobile is the safest city. We're, of course, we're thriving to be the safest city in America. But everybody, everyone in the United States is having that gun violence problem throughout the United States. I think that's a national uh, problem. But uh, we are combating that issue here with with city of Mobile. So, and it's wonderful. You can come downtown and have a great time. Our entertainment district is just as, as a good time as, as if you went to New Orleans. I think it's better than New Orleans because New Orleans, you got You can't let your guard down if you just want to relax. I mean, you can, there's more places to party in New Orleans, but for somebody my age, I, I just want to, I want to party, but I don't need to get like overwhelming where I'm, having to worry about turning a corner, having to worry about tripping and falling on cobblestone streets that are not maintained, having to worry about all the drama that comes to New Orleans. Um, Mobile yeah. is just like a, a nice younger brother uh, that, that I think is better than anything New Orleans can offer. Yeah, I, the weather here is absolutely just wonderful. You know, my yard's full of citrus trees, avocado trees. 
Uh, we're 45 minutes from the beach. We're four hours from Atlanta, five hours from Jacksonville, Florida, uh, two and a half hours from New Orleans, um, uh, 45 minutes from Biloxi, Mississippi. You know, it's just kind of in the, the middle of that uh, great places to go. It's wherever your destiny would like to take you. Yeah. Is the cost of living getting higher now? Or are people starting to drive up the cost of living down there more than you, you, people are comfortable with because it's so lovely? Um, you know, I was talking to a realtor about this yesterday, and she said that um, the market was really high, but she said it is starting to, to come down to drop. Our property tax here in the city of Mobile is very, very affordable. Very affordable. When we let people know about what our property tax are, for here the city of mobile is their their mouths just drop open it's so affordable well good man well i'm glad i got to go there i'm glad i got to show people what mobile's like um i wish i would have caught it on a much sunnier day it was kind of gray when we were there but yeah. um it's a wonderful place to be i did not expect it to be as lovely and inviting and chill and charming as what i found so i'm glad we got to go and i'm glad i got to meet you and i'm Glad to share with everybody what I experienced. Yeah, I'm, I'm really glad that y'all stopped by and we got to talk and uh, y'all learning and that, you know, we're a city of six nations. Um, you know, fun to talk to guests like y'all that come to our city and enlighten them uh, a little about the history of Mobile. It's just so enjoyable. Are you looking to move and need advice? I do consulting. That's right. I'll sit down and talk about where the next perfect place for you and your family should be. I do it all the time. Together, let's find you a new home that's safe and checks all your boxes. And I can also help you find your new house too. Email me and I'll work with you on not just helping you figure out where to move, but I can help you find your perfect home too. That's right. I know awesome, reliable agents all over the country. And I'd love to connect you to somebody who can help you search for that perfect home. Hey guys, if you learned something new about America or what it's like to live in America, great. You should think about subscribing and turning on your notifications. You can also click one of these videos or playlists for more. This is Sage Nick's manager. This has been a Corner House Entertainment production.